I'm just warning you, he's coming. Submitted by Coffee for Everyone. I'm writing this for mobile, so I apologize for the formatting. This is a story from when I was 16 years old. I was a sophomore in high school, and I'd recently thrown my rebellious stage into full throttle, trying every drug available to me. The one drug I never tried is meth, but as life would ironically have it, I started dating a meth addict named Richard. This story isn't so much about him as it is about his dealer, TJ. My boyfriend was a tiny, short guy and fortunately never laid a hand on me. His dealer, on the other hand, was a massive guy. He stood 6'3 and must have weighed 300 pounds. He had a machete he kept on his boot at all times. I once saw him knock a guy out for simply glancing at his house. He is a schizophrenic, meth addict, and dealer. Also, he lived directly across the street from me. About six months into my relationship with Richard, I ended it and told my parents everything. They were concerned, of course, but I was still in a lot of trouble. A few weeks later, after we'd broken up, I get a Skype video call request from him. I stupidly accepted it, and he cut right to the chase, telling me that TJ's cousin had recently been arrested, and somehow, their meth-addled brains believed that I was the cause of this, despite never having met his cousin. I told Richard to try and talk some sense into TJ, but all Richard said was, I'm just trying to warn you, he's coming, and ended the Skype call. Because I was a stupid, stupid teenager, I didn't report this to the police, and I didn't tell my parents until much later in life. I think my reasoning at the time was that I was using a lot of drugs myself, and I was afraid that I could get in trouble as well. After the night of the Skype call, I saw TJ everywhere. He was watching my house. He would show up at the park near my school where I'd smoke, and I'd see him standing across the street from my bus stop. He never said anything or made any moves. He just stared at me. This continued on for months, ramping up my anxiety and making it impossible for me to sleep. I started falling asleep in class and finding riskier places to smoke near campus to stay away from him. I was in total agony, knowing that something horrible was coming, but I was still too dumb to do anything about it. Luckily, TJ got busted after three months of watching me because some lady suspected he was making meth in his house. He's still in jail, from what I know, and I never saw Richard again after that Skype call. I hope I never have to see him again, and I would be smart enough now to contact the police if I ever do. Let's go to the park. Submitted by Nattles. I've been a lurker on this sub for ages, and I finally thought I'd post a creepy experience that happened to me. I was 15 at the time. It was the middle of the summer, and me and my two friends were walking through a parking lot. Quite a busy parking lot, I should add. Next to this parking lot was a big park, completely wooded off, with a large lake in the middle. It is known as a place sexual assaults take place due to the fact that you cannot see into the park when you're outside of it. So me and my two friends are in this parking lot, and they've walked ahead. I cannot remember the reason, but that's not important. And this man comes up to me. I'm a 5'3 girl, and there really isn't a lot of weight to me. This guy is completely towering me. He puts his arm on mine and asks if I want to go to the park. I'm wondering... This guy is mental. Who in their right mind would do that with somebody they don't know? Anyway, I declined as politely as I could, which he did not like, because he grabbed a hold of my arm and said, Let's go to the park, attempting to push me in that direction without causing a scene. I managed to get my friend's attention, and it came back to my rescue. Three days later, A police report went out about a guy who had raped a young woman in the park. His picture went up on the TV. Lo and behold, 
It was the guy from the car park. I alerted the police, and they came and took a description. So, creepy stranger in the parking lot, let's not meet again. Lost in Sheffield. Submitted by Sirenon Zeros. So, I'm a trans man. Before I started transitioning medically, I decided to go to a gig two hours away from Sheffield alone. I still looked obviously female, and most people would have immediately pegged me for a butch lesbian. I was turfed out with everyone else at about 1 a.m., which I hadn't expected, and decided I'd walk towards the station and wait until morning for my train home. I got a bit lost. I stopped and asked a guy for directions. He seemed friendly enough, and he offered to show me the way. After a minute or so of walking, he asked me if I'm a lesbian. And rather than get into a conversation with a stranger about gender and any potential violent consequences, I said yes. He starts complimenting me, saying I'm very beautiful. Have I ever slept with a man before? I say no. You probably haven't been with the right man yet. Come home with me. I'll show you. I try to shake him off, and eventually I manage to get him to lose interest, but it takes 10 minutes of being leafed through a city I don't know. I give him a fake number, saying my phone is broken, lie, and ask him how to get to the station. He directs me across the street to an unlit set of stairs leading down into total darkness and tells me the station is that way. I immediately think, fuck that. I thank him and hurry off down the street next to the stairs, hoping I'll find a way around. I find myself on an overpass that looks down to where the stairs lead, a dead-end alleyway with nothing but a few bins and five guys in hoodies standing, seemingly waiting for something. I absolutely flipped. I immediately began sobbing with shock, and I remember wanting to stop and catch my breath, but pure adrenaline kept me going. What if he came back? He must have seen me go around and avoid his directions. I tried following the main roads to get somewhere that had people. In 20 minutes of intermittent running and power walking later, I found some construction workers on the road and I begged them to help me find a taxi. They tried to get what was wrong with me because I'm clearly in a fucking state. But I'm just blubbering and begging to find a way back to the city I lived in. They flagged a taxi down for me the second one came past. It cost me 110 pounds to get home. Basically all the money I had. I couldn't stay there a minute longer, let alone wait outside the train station by myself until I could get a train home. I try not to think about what would have happened to me.